the challenging things about making a split in the spring is when you make a split and you keep it in the same apiary, sometimes all the bees, or certainly the foragers, will go back to their original colony. So frustrating because you need those foragers in your split. So today I want to show you what I do in trying to get my foragers to stay there and also in trying to get more foragers to go into the split. This is a technique you're going to be blown away by. Watch the video all the way through. You're not going to believe this. It works every single time to get more foragers into your split. So what I've done is I've made a split and this video is from a few years ago, but it's still pertinent to understanding this idea of how do you get foragers into your split. I made a split by moving uh, four or five frames into a deep box, moving it all the way to the other side of the building. And when I put it there, I, I, I made a couple of splits and one of the splits did really well. All the foragers stayed there. They took a reorientation flight and they started bringing in pollen within a few hours. It was amazing. But another colony right next to it didn't do so well. All the foragers, for the most part, went back to the original colony. And so what I'm going to show you today is how you can strengthen it. And that is by, it takes a little muscle, but you're going to pick up the colony and that's not doing well. You lost all your foragers in the split. You're going to pick this split up, carry it back to the hive that you split it from, move that hive out of the way, and then you're going to put your split right in its footprint. And what that's going to do is allow all the foragers to fly right into your split. And that moment where they land and start um, dropping off the resources, it's going to really bring a lot of resources into your split. And you're going to block it off because some of those foragers, now as you carry it back, are going to stay in there, take a reorientation flight. Now, let me just show you how I do this. But first, let me say that when you do it, you need to leave it in that position at least a half an hour. So that way you can get a lot of foragers to bring in a lot of resources. And then you simply move it back. You can go longer than that if you want to, but I think about a half hour is about all that I want to try. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Here is the colony that we made a split from. And so I'm looking and okay, I see lots of foragers coming in with yellow pollen, orange pollen. So this is going to be perfect for me. Uh, just to do a little um, experiment to see what I can do to get these foragers to fuel up my split that has the queen in it. Now here's the split that I'm talking about that has the queen in it. Not so many foraging, act, not so much foraging activity, a little bit. I think I'm blocking them. Let me move over. And uh, so what I want to do now is take it back so I can just allow foragers to grab a lot of protein and carbohydrates and fill this thing up with the resources they need. So I'm going to carry this back to the location and then I'm going to put it, I'm going to move that hive over there out of the way, put this one in its place so all the foragers fly into this hive. Now I'm going to have to move this one out of the way a little bit. I put my camera on top of another hive, so sorry there's so many bees, but uh, it'll be fine. Now I'm going to attempt to pick up this heavy hive here and get it out of the way. So here's how I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to grab my other one with the queen in it and put it back where it goes. Let me grab my camera. To show you how well this works, you can put an entrance reducer sort of right here to block the entrance. And if we step back, you'll see, I gotta get out of the way. See all the foragers wanting to go back inside now, but they can't because the entrance is blocked. And so um, I've got enough foragers in there now, so now I'm gonna pick this up and walk away with it and put it back uh, so you can see some of the bees that were foraging are just flying around in the same location. Now let's remove our entrance reducer. And there we go. These foragers hopefully will maybe take an orientation flight and stay with it. Some may go back. However, you can see the difference of foragers that we now have over here what we had earlier 
Even if they don't come back, even if they go back to the original colony, it simply means that we gained some resources for a little while. This is where the hive was. Look at all the foragers. And I'll put the original colony back in place. Now it's always fun to have more than one hive because you can do these sorts of manipulations. You can uh, swap frames around to equalize hives and you can move frames around if you need resources from foragers to go into one hive for a little bit versus another one. So if you're just starting out beekeeping and you only have one hive, uh, consider maybe going into two hives and that will give you more advantages for keeping your two hives equalized. And like I've always said, if you have one hive and you lose it, you're not a beekeeper anymore. <laughs> but if you had two hives and you lose one, you're still a beekeeper. Or another way that I say it is two is one and one is none. Get the point? Now, if you'd like to start beekeeping, I've made a video just for you. How to start beekeeping. I walk through all the equipment, how you go about it. And I'd like for you to watch this video right here. How to start beekeeping in 2023. I'll see you over there.